Hello, Hello fans. Welcome to Chick Wells Field, Dave Hughes Stadium, with tonight, October 6, 2017, the Hopkins and Hillers take on the Westwood Wolverines. Hi, my name is Rick Decina with Dandy Don Lehman, and we're going to get right into maybe the last couple of weeks, Don, because there were away games and we don't do those, a win against Bishop Fian and a win against Medfield. What did you see? What did you hear? Well, we were, we were at the – we had uh, – oh, that's right. We were not at Medfield. I'm sorry. That uh, Medfield came in. They were uh, – they were undefeated also when they met the Hillers. And um, from what I've heard, what I've read, Rick, um, we had a 14 nothing lead, and uh, Medfield had a high-powered attack. They were actually averaging, I think, 40 points a game. Um, that was uh, Hillers had a two-touchdown lead late in the fourth uh, quarter. Medfield scored two touchdowns quickly within, like, under a minute and a half, I think. Went into overtime. Uh, Hillers got the ball. They went down, scored, went for two which is fantastic, <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, Medfield got it back. They scored, and the two-point conversion uh, was a, uh, an errant pass over the kid's head. So it was a huge win for the Hillers. They're 4-0 um, for the first time in a while, and uh, this is good stuff here. And they've got a, certainly a, a rival in West, Westwood looking at them right now. Yeah, so I guess an instant classic for the fourth quarter in, uh, in Medfield, as it turned out. So let's talk a little bit about tonight's game against Westwood. Westwood comes in with a 1-3 and three record overall, 0-1 in the TVL. Um, a little bit of a down year maybe for them, but we're getting into the meat of the Tri-Valley Large schedule, so these games are very important for both teams. Anytime you play Westwood, um, you know, it kind of caught me off guard when we got the, um, the stat sheet from the coaches that the Hillers haven't beaten this, these guys since 2011. There's been some really close games and a, and a few heartbreakers over the years, the last five years. But that kind of stood out to me like, hey, we haven't beaten Westwood since 2011. Tonight sounds like a great night. Yeah, the 2011 year was uh, had some uh, some emphasis on it simply because Westwood, Holliston, and, and Hopkinton at the time were all vying for the league championship. They were both 8-1 that, that eight, night. 8-1 eight at that point. And uh, the, the game, as it turned out, we had tiebreakers associated to it. And our coaching staff managed that game perfectly to get to the tiebreakers in the first half. Yep. And then ultimately went on to win the game. Yep, they um, came out flying that night. And a couple of years ago, you know, it looked like they had the game in hand. And, and, and uh, Westwood had a quarterback that could really throw the ball. He was a big kid. And I believe he threw for – Maybe three touchdowns in the fourth quarter yeah. to take you know take the game. So like you said, there's been one. some games going on back and forth, but we haven't won since 2011. Now, Westwood's always competitive in all sports versus the uh, versus Hopkinton. So it's going to be an interesting night tonight. So interesting on the coin toss. Uh, this is homecoming weekend and celebrating the 50-year reunion of the class of 1967. I see some towels out there being waved. I'm guessing those are 1967 alumnus. I love it. It looks like it. Uh, they were out there with the athletic director, D, D. King, and uh, I could say these gentlemen, I could see them graduating high school in 67. That looks about right. Looks so about right. Good for them. That's fun stuff. So as, as, we, as we move into the national anthem, I'm going to take a break and come right back to this.
Well, the band's here. It was a terrific rendition. The fans singing a big white out here tonight. As homecoming, they're wearing white hockey and football jerseys. A beautiful night for football. It's got to be around 60 degrees, a little humidity in the air. And boy, if I could strap it on and put it on myself, I think I'd be out there myself, Don. Wow. <laughs> I think you might want to stretch a little bit first, Rick. <laughs> I didn't say I would last long. I, uh, give me one, give me one ball once, and I'll be fine. But I, I, I'll tell you, it, um, it that was a really nice rendition by the band, and you had a bunch of the kids in the student section singing along. That was that was really nice. We got a nice crowd here for homecoming. So uh, let's let's set it up. We've got um, number twenty-two, Antonucci, and number is that eighty-eight, Don? I can't see. No, it wouldn't be eighty-eight. There's no eighty-eight in the roster. I can't see the other guy back, but Westwood will receive in the north end zone. I, 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 my prediction, Rick, is I think we're going to be saying a lot of the word Antonucci tonight. Hey, why not? A paisan, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, we might as well do some of that. A little Antonucci. I, I'm just glad it's not the guy from Medway in the box. <laughs> you know, <remember? laughs> Antonucci left. Antonucci right. <laughs> oh, my God. And that Kelly on the kick. And oh. neither guy gets it, but it goes into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. That's a nice kick. Yeah, but both kids, uh, you take it, I got it kind of thing, and, uh, and it split them and got right down into the end zone. So they'll start at the, I don't know if it's like the pros, now they start at the 25 or the 20, but they'll start at the 20-yard at line. Where you're right, I think Antonucci's the workhorse. Yeah, he seems to be the central part of their offense. And they usually have an attack attack set. I do know that uh, Ed Manti, the coach of the of the Westwood Wolverines, has moved on. So this is the first year coaching staff. Yeah, they said they're running a spread, which yeah, you know, this looks a little tight here. Version of a spread. Head coach Brad Pindell. And it looks like it's just a wildcat kind of thing to Antonucci, and he'll pick up uh, about five yards on the right side. Looked like, uh, I don't know if he got quite five. He looked like he was stacked up there. Uh, looked like Cousins, 51, 45. Who do we got there? Ryan Brown. But, you know, it's four yards. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to get this kid going because he does have a history of uh, taking control of games. Yeah, he looks like a pretty good-sized kid. He's, uh, he's a little thick. He may not be too tall, but, uh, you know, good senior influence on this team for sure. So it looks like they're in a, a double wing. And Antonucci, this is old school football right here, Don. He takes it to the right, doesn't quite get the corner, and we're driven out of bounds. Uh, Hillers are holding the line here. Um, the end came up. I must be Canal out there, I think, as an outside linebacker. Um, you know, the, the defensive line looks like they're holding their own here so far, Rick. Yeah, they got uh, Colin Best, their biggest defensive lineman, uh, defensive lineman. I'm guessing he played offensive line as well. He's out of the game. I don't know why, but I saw him uh, not in uniform warming up. So we got trips left, and looks like number nine, Reed Wilson, the quarterback, in a shotgun. And he's going to throw to the right, and he's got his man, but it's not a first down. He did not get to the first down. That 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 is designed to get to the first line marker or beyond it and then make your way back, but he caught it short of the first down. Yeah, I don't even think that he got to the marker before he made his turn, and then you had number six, Cooney, was right there to, to put the hit on him, and you got an early here. F I, that's a pretty generous spot. Yeah, it's high, that side of the field is difficult for us to see, but it didn't look – that tells me that he got to at least to the marker and then came back. Yeah, I guess. That's a – but that, that play is designed. He's got to take that further up the field and catch it on the other side or right at the first down marker. So a big test early for the Hillers. Interesting. Double wing and Antonucci in the shotgun. And he faced right and is quick. And looks like he got the first down. That's a gutsy call. Yeah, well, you know, they're coming in, you know, as much as we're saying how we haven't beaten Westwood since 2011, if you look at the records, they're coming in as the underdog, and they're on the road, and this coach, I guess, is uh, he seems to be a gambler, at least early in the game here. And, you know, that looks like the Hillers had them that stuffed up, but the Antonucci kind of, you know, jiggled through there and got a first down. His jiggle probably a little different than your jiggle. I yeah, guess, well, right? you don't want to see my jiggle. Holy hell. <laughs> Heck. So they're in a... 
three guys in the backfield, but this is that. Oh, oh. he got stuck. Antonucci can't get the corner. And he's out of bounds around the 27 yard line, loss of about three. You know, number 24, Matt Brown, the outside linebacker, he, he crashed hard the first play when they got that first down. This time he came up, he really, that was him all the way. And then I, who came up there and cleaned that up? But that was number 24, Matt Brown, blowing that play up early. Yeah, maybe they saw something on the, on the first series where he just crashed following them, but it was a little, little fake right, come back left. He came in hard and he blew that up early. He pushed that out to the outside here. And now Westwood's got a second and 13. Yeah, I, number nine in the shotgun, Reed. He's got trips left and a lone receiver to the right. Same formation where they were short in the first down previous uh, series. And crossbuck action, running back comes through, number 34. Number 34, Colin Fay on the carry, tripped up, short gain. Yeah, Linquist came from his linebacker spot and just scraped over, really read it right off the bat and, and made a tackle for no gain. That was a really nice play, nice tackle. So it looks like it's gonna be the run, short pass kind of thing. I don't know if they have much speed. Well, we haven't seen this kid throw either. I mean, they started with Antonucci out of the Wildcat, so. Well, he's got one completion we know at the, uh, that was just short of the first down. Oh, the yeah, last yeah, set right, of downs. right, 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 right. So again, the pistol formation, I can't find Antonucci. I think he's in the slot right. Back to pass, lofts it in the middle, and it's picked, and it's, it oh. is picked. Look at this kid. Number 20. <laughs> Number 20, Chris Canal just kind of one-handed it and pulled it to himself for the interception. We got a flag on the play, holding against Westwood. That'll be declined. Well, I'll tell you, that's, that's a highlight right there. Yeah. That is a highlight play, a big-time play, by a sophomore, Chris Canal. Um, you know, I, I noticed him the first game we did here, Rick, because, they, you know, sophomores don't often get on the field especially in football, but he looked like he was starting right away, and he made plays the last time I saw yeah, him. Yeah, he had a few tackles last time. Yeah, big time. And now this was obviously a play. That was uh, one-handed, over your shoulder, back in coverage yep. as an outside linebacker making that play. That's, Excellent. That's his second interception of the year. He was able to return it about seven yards. So a quick pass out to to Hebert, and he's down the left sideline, and he's going to go. Touchdown, first play, the offensive play. Just a little swing pass to uh, Ebert, touchdown. That, 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 was a, that was an excellent play from start to finish. Uh, Hebert ran a great pattern out of the backfield. Ryan Keller, who we'll get to later as far as his accuracy, landed in a perfect spot right you know, in stride, and, and then Connor did the rest. He made a nice little just you know, Ole threw some defender yeah. out of his way, and then his speed took over and took him to the end zone. That was good stuff. Well, that's one way to make the turnover, make it pay. And I can't, I can't see the number. Who's kicking, Don? Uh, it's probably Pagliuca, 7-57. Yeah, probably 57, 57. Yep. Pagliuca with the extra point, 7 nothing, at the 7-29 mark of the first. So as we come upfield, it's 7 to nothing. You know, things as the games that I've seen, things have kind of worked out pretty well for the uh, for the Hillers in their offense. First offensive series, certainly wasn't expecting a one play, 55 yard uh, score, um, and it was that, a pretty simple play too. That's exactly the way Sully drew it up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess it is. So now, why doesn't it work like that all the time, man? If that's how it's drawn up. I don't know. I'll tell you, it was really well blocked too on the end there. I, you know, it's hard to see uh, who, who somebody had a nice seal block on the end. And then Connor, like I said, made a nice cut. And, uh, well, anytime you got a, a long run, I mean, there's help along the way. It's not just a you know one guy. I mean, he, he cut it and went straight up field and maybe made one other cut. So Kelly on the kickoff with with Antonucci and possibly Sean Gallagher. I can't see the number 28. Could be John Hannon. Hannon with the. He cuts across the field and he gets up the right sideline and he's out to about the 30 yard line. I, I don't anticipate us kicking much to Antonucci, um, but that kid looked like he had a little bit of wheels. He got to the outside, made it out to the 30, a little bit past the 30 right maybe. The 30 yard line, mm -hmm. yeah. So 
They'll take over, Westwood will take over for their second possession at the 30 yard line, first and 10. You know, this Hiller offense has been, um, with the exception of the, you know, they had that rain game down in Bishop Fian, and then, you know, Medfield ended up being a close game and they only scored twice, but they have a pretty explosive team here. Yeah, they get some speed. That, For sure. Uh, that, that, that certainly helps the cause. And so Antonucci cuts it up to the middle, cuts, gets about five to the 35 yard line and a flag on the play. Look like it might have been Block. a hold. A block in the back, personal Oh, against uh, Westwood. I saw a body fly, come flying through there, but I don't know if that was the the, the body that was back. blocked in the back. So they're discussing, they're gonna put him back. Coach Durad getting his options, you're gonna move him back. Anytime you can move him back, that's a, uh Especially when you're inside the red zone, pushing back inside their own red zone or up, bumping up against their own red zone. So it's going to be about first, first and 19, first and 18, somewhere along there at the 20, maybe 17 at the 23-yard line. Reed Wilson in the in this pistol. And he's going to throw, quick throw. He's got to complete. And as ah, a face mask, and I'm yeah. pretty sure there's a face mask in there on the, that's on the fifth, tackle. That's going to be a 15-yarder for sure. Twisted him around by his face mask. That's they look like his, uh, his hand got cut up in there, I guess. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's a big, that's a break for Westwood. Sure. It looks like this number nine can throw the ball, Rick. Yeah, he does. He's tall enough too. You can see mm -hmm. he had the the play kind of over the middle, little little hook over the middle. So that pushes the ball out to the 49-yard line. Will be first and ten for the Wolverines. So what do we got? We got Matt Brown at right outside linebacker. We got number 52, Alex McDonald. Looks like he's at the tackle spot. You got Luke Deloya out here, number seven, at the uh, right cornerback. You got uh, Cooney at safety, and you also got Abbott at safety. You got Lindquist. You got Ionelli, number eight. Looks like he's coming up as a strong safety. So they're in the shotgun. Westwood handoff to Antonucci, and he gets the right corner, and it's coming back. Another, another flag on the play. Another hold. Hold against Westwood, coming back. Boy, this is going to be frustrating for the, the Wolverine staff. This takes the rhythm out of the game. What you're going to have to do with this Antonucci kid is get 11 hats to the ball. And what that means is get the whole team tackling him because he's quick and he will uh, he will squirt through there if you give him a crack. So everybody's got to be pursuing here. And it looks like he's got pretty good cake, cutback ability also, Rick. Yeah, you know, the one thing you got to worry about, they have a lot of crossing action in their backfield, so you can't fly to him right away. You're going to make sure he's got the ball. Mm-hmm. You know, don't don't go to his first step necessarily. You just gotta ride him out a little bit. So it's trips left, one lone receiver to the right. The Hillers are a little confused. It's a handoff up the middle to Antonucci. Defensive line's doing a good job. So it's gonna be second and about eighteen from the from the Wolverine forty one yard line. So it's not a particularly big line, Mike. Those four guys up front. I'm oh, Mike. Jeez, that's too. That's the wrong Mike. Wrong Mike. He's gone for two years, and I'm still calling him Mike, right? I'm better looking. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> well, 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 maybe that could be a poll for uh, we can have people call in. <laughs> Mike Prater or uh, Don Lehman. Who's better looking? <laughs> so we get Reed Wilson in the shotgun. He's gonna throw. He does too. Gets to the original line of scrimmage. It's complete to number 18. That was just a quick little curl. Um, kind of settled in there in between um, Ionelli, the strong safety, and Luke Deloya. 
And Luke made a nice hard tackle to bring him down. Third down, big third down here. Yep, Drew, Dur Drew Durker on the catch, the senior wide receiver. So it's third and 10 from the, four from the 49 yard line of the Wolverines. 437 to go in the first quarter. And the quarterback and Antonucci are having a little discussion and Hawkinson calls a timeout. It looks like they wanted to see what kind of formation they're going to come out in. And uh, I would say that uh, Coach Gerard and Coach McLean, the uh, defensive coordinator, didn't like what they saw and they called timeout. And in high school ball, you got plenty of those, Rick. They, they have four, uh, they'll have four left from here. They got another four. I just checked Twitter. Mike Prate is leading by 32 votes. Ah, oh. Mike Twitter's le Mike Prate is leading the Twitter vote uh, on the good-looking side. So I don't think there could be a better example of fake news than, <laughs> than that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll check back in in half and see how that goes. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, you would anticipate they're going to throw the ball here. There's not too many running plays that are designed to get not, you know, 10 yeah, yards. Unless, you know, Super Antonucci, you know, a little bubble pass to him. He could, uh, you know, all you got to do is make one or two kids miss, and he looks like he's got the ability to do that. So you're going to have to have a strong base. You're going to have to keep your feet and stay low and make a tackle on this kid. Yeah, and we got the, uh, the student section getting it going here. Powers. Barking out signals of uh, powers. Uh, Reed Wilson barking out signals in the shotgun. Trips to the right. Green. And it's going to be a screen. And Antonucci turns it up, but Linquist meets him after a gain of about three yards. You've got to be careful that. of getting in there. So that'll bring up fourth and eight. Yeah, it looks like, you know, the defensive line, they, they you know, they did what they do. They, they I'm sure they saw it was a screen, but the linebackers stayed home and did a nice job uh, staying level to the line of scrimmage and, and, and not letting Antonucci get anywhere. Well, I got to tell you, it's, it's got to be tough to throw a screen to Antonucci because I'm pretty sure there's a few people keeping an eye on him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm you sure might want to go in a different direction when you're trying to do that stuff just to, you know, keep the, the flow away from right. the ball. So the punter is, is that number four, Don? Um, I think Nicholas so. Nicholas McQuarrie. Yep. Got Abbott wow. back. Wow, Abbott's nice back. Nice kick. That thing turned over and died at the, oh, but it ultimately rolled into the end zone. Wow. He kicked that 50 yards. That was a nice punt. That thing had height and that was very impressive. That was actually. a nice punt. You had two kids down there doing a nice job trying to, trying to down it. They just missed it. And that was a break for the Hillers that they weren't able to down that inside the one yard line there. Well, that, that punt turned over and actually stopped at the two yard line, kicked up, checked up as they say, but they weren't fast enough to get it. He out kicked the coverage as they say. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that. That could be a weapon if it, you know, any close game, special teams always come into, uh, into play. So it looks like, you know, they've got a punter and, and we know that the Hillers have a, a, a very strong special teams and their place kicker and uh, specifically, their punter, Brendan Kelly. So in the shotgun, it's Ebert straight up, gain of about gain of about four or five. Yeah, it's nice to see Connor in there. He was banged up early in the year. He missed a couple games, missed some time. Um, it's you know that that's always tough for a kid his senior year and. I know his parents are ready to, you know, <laughs> hang themselves, but it's uh, it's all good now. It's great to see him out here playing on Thanksgiving or on, uh, on homecoming night. Absolutely. So Kelher in the shotgun has got two receivers to each side wide. Hebert in the backfield, and it's a handoff to no handoff. Kelleher straight up the middle, and he makes a man miss, and he's taken down at the 50-yard line. So a little read option kind of thing there, Don. You know, that, that, that's always been in um, Coach Dan Sullivan's uh, playbook. You know, he, depending on the kind of quarterback he's had is it, it, how much he runs it. He, uh, that's the first time I've seen him run it this year, Rick. And, you know, we kind of got a glimpse of Kelleher last year. We know he can move a little bit. Uh, but he looked like he had a nice burst there. Hmm. And he got a, a gain of about 25 yards on the play. Brings it to midfield. 2.39 left in the first quarter. The Hillers are marching. And this time he hands it off to, to Ebert, who gets the left side 
and is hung on to by Antonucci. Pick up of about five to the left side. Offensive line did a nice job there. Um, there was no Westwood players really getting off their blocks, and Connor was able to get it around the left end. And uh, you know, anytime you're gaining five yards or six yards on the first down, that's a good start to a drive. Yeah, so this is, Hebert's got 34 rushes on the year with 119 for a three and a half yard average. They've run the ball 60 times compared to 94 times throwing it. Uh, so they're not exactly balanced, but that's how football's played today. It's, it's more through the air than it is on the ground. And I think it plays to their personnel. I mean, they, you know, they've got some wide receivers with some skill and they got a kid that can, 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 can throw the ball. Okay, uh, Ebert gets nothing on second down, so it'll bring up third and about five. You know, you might want to file that one away, though. If he does keep that, he's got that <laughs> wide open. That could be something setting up for later because if Ryan just fakes that dive there and keeps it, there was nobody out here. Well, it looked like they, they had a blitz coming up, and I don't know if it was the A or B gap, but they had somebody moving up into that, that area, probably unblocked. That's when you gotta you got to scream out, Omaha, Omaha. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Alert, alert. Alert, alert. Shotgun wide receivers to the left and right. Ebert in the backfield. He throws it deep, and it's could have been picked off. He was looking for Cooney, but the defense by number six, Brandon Lonane, the junior. And what do we have? A flag on the play. Well, that's tough. I mean, Ryan had all day. It looks like he had a little extra help getting all day there uh, with, <laughs> with the hold. But he, he had time to throw, and he, he threw a nice ball. And if that defender wasn't there, that would have been a touchdown. But it looks like he didn't look that safety off quite as much, and that safety was able to break on the ball and, and, and make a good play on it and almost pick it off. So they, they accepted the penalty to go third and 15. This offense, it's, that's probably not necessarily, necessarily a bad thing on – they're on the Westwood side, five yards. That's makeable. Well, I would say here, you know, you could look at it at two down territory, depending on what they get on this here, on this on this uh, third down play. But it wouldn't surprise me to see Coach go for it on fourth. Maybe a screen. screen. And it's well set up. Ebert's going to get the – he's got the first down. And he's still got the first down to about the 35-yard line. Tough run after he got hit. Yeah, that was a nice job. That was set up very well. Um, you, you had Cavallo out in front, number 65. You had number 50, uh, 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 Johnny Farina. Um, Anthony Farina. Anthony Farina out in front. And uh, they threw some nice blocks, and uh, you know that was a very well set up screen. So the Hillers get the first down um, at the 39-yard line of the Wolverines is 12 seconds left in the quarter. I'm guessing they're going to get this play off. And a quick pitch out to Ebert, and he breaks a tackle and gets about five, hard to tell where he went, about four on the play. Yeah, I mean, that's the last play of the quarter done. Number three came up here, and um, and Connor did a nice job because he could have very easily been tackled in the backfield on that play. Made a nice stiff arm, bounced it out, and made something out of uh, what could have been nothing. So Jake Jake Faft, the number three, the corner for Westwood, as you said, came across, got his both hands on him, but he just kind of ran through the tackle. That's why you got to tackle the legs, Rick, not the shoulder pads. Yeah, it's not a hugging type of game, is it? Nope. So after one, the Hill is up 7-0, but driving down at the Westwood 30-yard line. It'll be second down in about five as they set it up. This is, uh, this is a big drive here. You know, to start the second quarter, the Hillers have been in control of this game. Westwood's had a couple first downs, um, but if you can go up 14 nothing, it's a nice start. Make, Certainly make, is. Makes, uh, makes all the coaching decisions and all the decisions you're going to make throughout the game uh, just a little bit easier. Absolutely. We got a little music going in the background. We uh, 
Have a nice crowd here tonight, beautiful night. Kids playing football, doghouse is open. Hiller Grillers behind us doing their thing. <laughs> well, they were doing their thing. They, you know, they're now in the, uh, they're now in the, um, in the stands doing their thing. So we got uh, double wide receivers. Quick screen to go, and it's it was uh, a forward pass. Pick that up, are you sure? Yeah. It was a forward yeah. pass. So that'll bring up third and six. Now that one, Brian, that just kind of left a little bit behind him. It was catchable, um, but it looked like Westwood had that pretty well defended, uh, even if that was going to be a catch. So it brings up third and, should be third and six, incomplete pass. Here it comes. I don't know who the, it uh, looks like we have kids doing the sticks this year, Don. Oh, JV team, maybe some kids from the JV or freshman team, I, maybe? I, I, I don't know. Probably freshman, it looks like. I see somebody wearing a, a Hawking and jersey. So it's third and six from the 30. Ebert to the left of Kelleher. And he throws to Ionelli, and he's down to the 11-yard line. Kelleher had all day to throw, Mike. Uh, he, 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 had, he, he had all day to throw. The lines, it looks like they're rushing four kids. Which means they've, you know, they're keeping back seven. Um, Ionelli kind of found the, kind of dragged across, found the open space, and and you know as he's been doing all year, Ryan Keller hit him right in stride, and now we're down here inside the, uh, right at the ten yard line, right, fourteen yard line, Rick. Yeah. So it's going to be first and ten, at about the thirteen. So it's a handoff to Ebert, and he got nothing on the play. Looks like there might have been a meeting at the line of scrimmage with, with him being the. Uh, yeah, the guy's in the middle there. You got number 75, and, and that was part of the, the scouting report from Westwood is they had a couple space eaters, um, yeah. and that's not space heater. That is space eater. eater. Uh, you know, eating up space in the middle of the line there. But the, their big guy is job. out, though, number 77. Colin Best not suited up tonight. Well, that's a, that's that that'll help the Hillers cause. So second and about 12, he lost two on the play. Got Linquist open coming across the middle. He breaks two tackles for the touchdown. Linquist wide open, dragging across the middle, Don. Then he broke uh, two, maybe three tackles to get into the end zone. Yeah, again, Ryan had uh, plenty of time to throw. He kind of sat back out there, uh, you know, went through his reads and his progression and saw Linquist drive, uh, dragging across the, uh, the field, hit him right in stride, and uh, Linquist pounded his way in, and here you go. Two touchdowns, uh, two touchdown lead. So at 9.27 of the second, a 14 or 16 yard pass. To Linquist. Makes the score 13 to nothing with the extra point. It's 14 to nothing. And I could see uh, Westwood's uh, getting dragging a little bit already. They're walking off the field. That's not a good sign, Rick. You always want to run off a football field. So with 9.27, Westwood will receive the kickoff. Antonucci and Hannon back. Kelly to kick it off. Scotty getting people uh, fired up over here, Rick. He's got his cheer going. Well, game day coordinator, he's got it all going. And joining the whiteout student section. Kelly gets a, that's a good kick to Antonucci coming up. No, not Antonucci. That's uh, Hannon. Hannon gets it to about the 30 yard line where the Wolverines would take over first and 10. Well, this is a big drive if you're a Westwood fan. Um, Hillers have not really been slowed here offensively. 
So, you know, if the Westwood is going to want to stay in this game, they're going to have to match Hopkinton's offensive production, and thus far they have not been able to do it. So a good crowd here for homecoming. Looks like the Westwood fans are kind of filling in a little bit too. Well, this is the longest uh, ride in the TVL coming down uh, 109, no. 495. Oh, yeah, the longest like as far as traffic and yeah. all that. Oh, yeah. Not, yes, not yes. an easy ride. No. Nope. Getting here for 6.30, 7 o'clock. But there's, uh, it's a nice night, too. No rain. The field looks great. Yeah, we kind of touched on it last time, you know, the weather we had here last year uh, for the home games was, was horrible. And uh, it, it looks like um, things are turning around this year for, uh, for the Hillers. And with another beautiful night and a beautiful night for football. An outstanding night for football. I mean, this is starting to get cool in October. And as we get into our broadcast, we have the next one would be October 20th. As we get through the schedule, we'll get into that a little later. As Westwood comes out to set their offense after the score by the Hillers. You know, what are they doing here on defense? They're not really keeping a guy too deep. They, oftentimes when they spread out, they man up. There's nobody in the middle of the field. Yeah. And that's that's been a staple of this defense. They, they feel they can go with these guys one-on-one. -on -one. Antonucci. And there's a flag on the play. Uh -huh. so I think somebody might have to scream, it's not about you, refs. <laughs> well, what do we got? Holding on the offense. He was right in the middle of the field. Antonucci had picked up a few yards, but that's going to come back. Now it looked like it came from either the guard or the center. But that's that's got to be at Westwood's fourth penalty uh, at least. At least their fourth penalty. I think they had four and one drive. Yeah, I mean when you know when you're down fourteen nothing, you can't you can't afford penalties, holding penalties, setting you back ten yards. That just shoots you in the foot. That that makes it for a long drive. So it'll be first down. And Marker said, okay, he just changed it from one to two. It's first down and twenty. And this doesn't necessarily play to the strength of Westwood. Antonucci to the right of Wilson. And guess what? Antonucci up the middle. Well, you know, I, I'm sure that that, you know, obviously that's their bread and butter. But, it, you know, the Hiller defense, the defensive line is not being pushed back. The linebackers are playing tough. Uh, Lindquist made a nice hard tackle right there. Um, Farina's standing tall. You know, the Hillers are going to be difficult to run against tonight. It's going to look like they have a clear advantage in the front seven. Antonucci fixing his. Had his helmet off to maybe tie a shoe so it didn't come off. So 8.08 in the second. Wilson going to throw. Quick screen. It's a funnel screen. It didn't really do anything. Almost like he didn't want to run upfield. Just kind of kept coming towards the middle. Yeah, he had some space around him once he caught it. He could have turned it up, but he ended up going sideways. And I'm not sure they got anything on that play. <laughs> Maybe a, a yard. Okay. Yeah, no, no gain. gain. You know, third and, third and 16. Almost looked like it was going to be some sort of trick play there. Well, I thought he was going to give it maybe to Antonucci yeah, coming, coming out the side. Coming around the side. Me too. Yeah. Could it's be a, something set up for later. Yeah, who knows? Could have been one of those things where I don't want this thing. <laughs> Somebody else right. take this. I just think you're all about conspiracy theories. <laughs> that's what you're. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. Thought. Maybe. <laughs> who knows? Uh, trips right. Reed Wilson. And he's going to take off, but there's not, no doing. No doing. Number 24. Yeah, 24, Matt Brown. And uh, looks like you had, looks like both those Brown brothers, 45. This is the other Brown brother. What's his name? Ryan. Ryan Brown. Ryan and Ryan's 45, and Matt's 24. 
And look like they made a little sandwich out of the quarterback. I'm, guess, I'm there. guessing they're twins. Both yes, being, they are. Both, both um, being uh, juniors. They are. They are twins. Yes, they're Irish twins. Oh, he dropped the I'm snap. And still a nice booming kick, and a little bit of a roll. Going to roll out around the 35-yard line. I'll tell you, the Hillers had a real return there because that, the punter dropped it. He had all day. It looked like a lot of our guys had turned and ran. We I want to keep an eye on that, Rick. I mean, you don't want to. You got to have at least one or two spotters watching the punter. Yeah, a couple of years ago that happened to us. The uh, we pulled out. Everybody pulled out, and I, I don't remember the team. But uh, you're right. If he looked up, you know, he obviously he's just looking to get rid of the the kick. But if he he probably could have got to the outside. I'm not saying he would have got a first down. Right, but, uh, right. Some real estate. Yeah, you got to watch that moving forward. Nevertheless. So we so got Hillis midfield will, here. Yeah, no, Hillis will take over at the 30. Six yard line, first and 10, 624 to go in the first half. Trips left. Hebert's going to run it up the middle. Almost as if they're working on the run game a little bit tonight, you know, Don. Well, figuring it's going to get a little chillier, maybe some bad weather, and who knows? Yeah, I mean, they're there, or, or they could have thought they could move the ball. I mean, with a 14 nothing lead, you know, there's nothing wrong with uh, running some clock. But that A gap, the run up in the A gap is not there. So we second, picked up about two yards on the play, second and eight, trips left. Keller heard a throw, he's looking over the middle, Abbott, oh, he dropped the ball. He's throwing a little behind him. Looked like he had it, but he dropped it at the 49-yard line. Yeah, that was uh, that was a that was a tough throw by Ryan. He uh, Abbott was wide open, and um, and Ryan just kind of you know threw it behind him. Uh, I think that I could count on one hand how many throws that kid's missed, and uh, <laughs> that was one of them. Yeah, I thought he was going to go. Looked like he was going to go deep. I don't know who was breaking down deep, but. Abbott ended up breaking off his route and coming into the middle of the field. Yeah, that was interesting because they had an Ionelli over here for the little bubble pass, and then, I, yeah, I didn't see who was streaking either. So we set it at third and eight. Trips left, very similar formation. Cooney to the far right by himself. Hmm. And that screen, I think there was a screen. It was going to go to Ebert, went nowhere. Kelleher took a pretty good hit, and so did Ebert. Yeah, um, that was a screen that was not well executed. And um, yeah, Ryan took a pretty hard hit. You don't want your QB taking that kind of hit. And uh, and Ebert got nailed also. So, okay, so Westwood kind of said, you know what, we're not going to get blown out. And here we go. They're getting the ball back with five minutes left. Let's see what they can do with it. Kelly's sitting with his heels on the 25-yard line. Decent kick, and it's going to be fair caught by Antonucci, and I'm not sure what happened. I don't think Antonucci's sure either. Yeah, he's just, you know, that was a smart play because I don't know. That's a very smart play. He obviously thought maybe that it touched maybe, somebody. Maybe, yeah, I think he thought number 44 touched it, and he wasn't taking any... Uh, any chances yeah a smart play in the sense that he went and got it but not so smart to keep people close to the ball he's well, got to direct people out of there i think that if it's a fair catch here does he get it right there yeah it looks like they're putting it was it a penalty it was a oh it actually it actually touched hoppington instead of uh so it was a legal it actually touched hoppington so that's where the ball would die yeah dead ball right there Yeah. So the, the ruling there is that it touched Hopkinton. Antonucci actually could have picked it up and taken it, but the ball would come back to the 31-yard line. So 5.15 to go in the half. Wilson is going to throw it, and he's got number 18. Number 18, Drew Durker, the senior wide receiver for about nine, maybe eight. Yeah, Durker, uh, he, he, he's a pretty big kid. He's got some size. Um, not that they give you their no, size. No, they didn't give it us they didn't give he us looks all like the, he's uh, tall. Don, and, they're uh, all tall to me, Don. <laughs> right, I mean. 
<laughs> I know that. Five nine is tall to me. No, they. Um, he, uh, he looks like he's got a good size. That's his second or third catch. He looks like he's uh, their number one target thus far. So trips right. Wilson in the shotgun with Antonucci to his left, I think. And it's a run. It's not Antonucci. It's number 34, Colin Fay. Is that 34, Don? Yeah, that was number 34. Colin Fay, the sophomore running back, spelling Antonucci, unless he was split out somewhere. I didn't see where Antonucci was, but the Hiller defense led by Cousins, and you had Cooney, uh, you had Lindquist, who's always in the mix, uh, kind of stacked him up. And they got a big third down play here. Now, this is interesting. It's third and three. They, this is almost a uh, you know, college pro type, a full substitution of skill guys. You know, I don't know why they're not calling timeouts here. I mean, you're down well, they, two touchdowns. You got his, five of them. His, uh, his hand just went up. He's got a few seconds to get this ball off. Ant that's not Ant I don't know where Antonucci is. That was that went nowhere. Number 34, Colin Fay took a, a wildcat shotgun snap and went nowhere. He might have lost a yard. Yeah, I think Antonucci's glad he wasn't there because uh, McDonald had that play uh, along with Anthony Farina, they both had that sniffed out and stuffed. So well, now you're looking at a fourth down here. You got 310 left. Um, fourth down and four. Don, I'm looking for Antonucci. And I don't I don't see him sitting down on the sidelines anywhere. And he's not on the field. Well, I, I can't. I'm not going to tell you who's sitting on Westwood sideline, but I don't see him on the field. You're right. Which is, you know, unfortunate. It's fourth and two for them, fortunate for the Hillers. And another wild. And Westwood takes a timeout with 2.43 left in the half. Now he's got a little decision to make here. You don't make this, the short field for Hopkinton, you, you kind of almost put yourself out of reach in this game. I'm not saying that they couldn't come back, but. 14 looks a lot better than 21. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking that it was, uh, I would have a, not a problem if it was fourth and one or fourth and inches here, but, you know, with the way, especially the way the Hiller defensive line has been controlling um, the line of scrimmage, and it looks like they might be taking Antonucci to the locker room here. Oh, we got uh, we got some, some Hopkinton Hall of Famers here on the, uh, on, on the screen, we've got uh, Aubrey Doyle Sr. And, and Jr. Aubrey Doyle Jr. We got Mark Stickney. Keith Vera. And Keith Vera. But certainly the three on the right, uh, it's good to see them here. They got the prime locations. Well, you, you want to, Aubrey Doyle Sr. is the historian of Hopkinton and Hopkinton football. He's got it all going. Hopkinton's going to, I mean, the Westwood's going to punt. And it was a not a very a shanked punt that goes out around the oh, around the 40, 45 yard line, a shanked punt. Well, I, I don't think that netted out. I don't think that netted out much. Well, he picked up about 15 yards in the punt, but at least it puts, from a westward perspective, puts Hopkinton on the on the other side of the field. Plenty of were, time. They were hoping to get that down to the 20 yard line at least. Well, especially since the way that kid's been punting, Rick. Yeah. You yeah, know, no I think he just kind of shanked that, unfortunately, for Westwood. And and now here the Hillers are with a chance to really, uh, really, uh, you know, put a stamp on this game here. If we can yeah. go up 21 nothing, that would be Antonucci's sweet. not playing defense either, so. And they're, now they're confused. They don't, they got a lot of people over here, but. He's going deep, but he doesn't have him there. Ionelli. Now, that's the second big hit that Kelleher has taken um, by number 53. There is no 53 on their roster, oh, no. so. What the heck? No, it was 53. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, I saw the number two. Yeah, that's the second time he's hit him in a row. He's coming from his left defensive tackle spot. So you might want to... Um, you, know, you don't want number five to be going through too many hits like that, and I know I know his mommy certainly doesn't want that. <laughs> so they better hold their block out there. <laughs> and he appreciates you calling him his mommy. So <laughs> uh, it's uh, here we go, Kelleher rolling right, 
He's throwing to Abbott over his head. It's going to be third and 10. 221 left. So there hasn't been any really time coming off the clock here. So now you're, you know, now you're here. We are. If Hillers don't get this, then you get the ball back to Westwood. They got a shot. So this is a big third down here early. Yeah, you know. it, it is. Late, it is. late in the second quarter. It certainly is. You pick up this first down, you can probably at least run out the. I don't know if they're going to call timeouts to try to get the, the the ball back, but. I guess it would depend on what the Hillers are doing. If they throw the ball and complete, the clock will stop. If they try a run play here, my guess is. Uh, Sully's going to chuck this thing. Trips. Trips to the right. Motion. Nope, now it's trips to the right with the motion. Kelly Hurd's got Abbott wide open down the middle of the field. <laughs> Touchdown. <laughs> yeah, he had him streaking. He had to come back and get that ball. Number 28 on the defense, John Hannon. Wasn't able to strip it out of his hand. Looked like he almost was able to knock it out, but Abbott kept it in his hands, caught it at about the 20 yard line, made his way in to make it 20 to nothing. Ryan had some time there. He was able to plant his feet. He, uh, he, he threw a, you know, Will had four yards on number 28. Number 28 was lost. He must have, you know, he was, he was way beat. And then Ryan underthrew it a little bit. Abbott did a good job coming back to the ball. Number 28 swatted at it, didn't get it, and there we go, touchdown Hillers. And the kick is good by Pagliuca. And we come upfield with 2.08 left, and the Hillers are up 21 to nothing. This is, this is a great start here. You know, what, you know what I would do, maybe, Rick, just for the heck of it, just to really – Put it away, and then get the get the second team in. Why don't you do an onside kick here? <laughs> Be aggressive. <laughs> you know, Why not? I've seen enough of this Westwood team over the years to so to know that they would do the same darn thing to us if they had the opportunity. That, that may have been the old coaching regime. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if they even know this guy, Brad Pindell. Oh yeah, assistant that's coaches, yeah, John that's right. Chisholm and, and Jim Wilcon. Yeah, the other coach. Went, where'd he go? Framingham. Yeah, Manti went to Framingham. Yeah. So. Uh, it's funny you bring that up. There was uh, in the 2011 game when they won, they did an onside kick in the first half to get the ball back because the tiebreaker was points. Yep, I remember. And we recovered and went down and scored. So Kelly booms it, and I can't see who's in for who's in for Antonucci number. Uh, That's number that, 28. That was number 28. That's Hannon. He's on the uh, return out to the 24-yard line. I couldn't see the other number that was back with him. Might have been number 27, Shammer Hall. A lot of sophomores touching the ball for the for the uh, Wolverines. Oh, that could bode well for the future, but not not yeah, not the not present. Today. <laughs> so 159 left in the first half. Hill is up 21 nothing. It'll be first and 10. From the 24-yard line, Wilson in the shotgun. He's got it spread out, trips left. He throws over the middle, and it's almost it's top tipped by Ionelli, who came over the top to knock it down. The pass was intended for number 28, John Hannon. Yeah, it looks like number 28 is, uh, has taken over for Antonucci, um, certainly on the offensive side of the ball and, uh, and maybe on defense too, but he's, we seem to be calling his number a lot. So that'll set up second and 10, 152 to go and a half. Westwood missing their workhorse. We don't know why. He left the game somewhere in the second quarter. I'm trying to get a beat on that at halftime if we can, maybe with the coaches. Are there coaches upstairs? There, are, there should be coaches up, okay. upstairs coming through. Screen out to number 34. Oops. Number 34 being Colin Fay, the sophomore, and he's met by a few hillers after a gain of about five, four. Uh, almost a block in the back there by number 76 on that screenplay, but they didn't call it. Um, 
But well, nevertheless, might, uh, the, you know, the Hiller linebackers are doing a nice job staying home on those screen passes. They might have heard you earlier. You wanted them to put their flag away. I've had that conversation with refs before. <laughs> Specifically that one. <laughs> that ref or that conversation? <laughs> that ref. <laughs> so we got a timeout. The Hill is probably just holding time so they can try to get the ball this back. On the Twitter, Don Lehman had 20 votes at the end of the first quarter, but now he's down minus three. <laughs> <laughs> well, get out and vote, so, people. So we, we got the, the, the good-looking Twitter vote going. and Get out uh, get out and vote. John Lehman had 20 votes, but he's got minus three. Speculation is Mike Prate hacked the system and uh, <laughs> wants to win by a landslide. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if Mike is uh, that up on the computers that he could <laughs> – <laughs> get in there and do something like that. Well, you know, it's, it's on the internet. So and you, and so. you know he's he's yeah. listening from Plymouth. You know that. You know that. I hope he is. I think I, I think miss Mike him. I think Mike Terosian sends a copy to him every uh, every week. I don't know why he doesn't come up and sign some autographs every once in a while. So it's it's third and about six. Wilson throws to the sideline and he overthrows number twenty eight. John Hannon. Yeah, Hannon came out of the backfield, and uh, number 20, Chris Canal, kind of just ran with him and just ran him out of the pattern there, and that was, uh, that was a nice defensive play. And Hiller's going to have another opportunity with the ball here, Rick, with a minute 35 left. Yeah, so Nicholas Quarry had a beautiful punt. His first punt was over 50 yards, turned it over. His last punt was a shank that went about 15. So let's see what happens here. It's Abbott is deep. And another shank, oh, oh, could it have been blocked? No, I don't think so. And it's recovered at the, around the 50 yard line by number two, Patrick Wade, the senior wide receiver. It was close to being blocked, but you know, that was just a, a you know, maybe this kid gets nervous when he, they get pressure on him, but that was his second, uh, second bad punt in a row. Yeah. We were talking about it being a weapon earlier. <laughs> I, I'm not so sure it is anymore. So they're gonna put the ball right at, we'll call it the 49, 50 yard line of the of the Wolverines. It's at the 49 and the, oh. No, it's at the 47. It was an illegal touch. Yeah. So we set the clock, 126. Abbott, you know. Short motion. He's just gonna streak down the field. Oh. And, and and Don, I was uh, I was watching this a little bit. Abbott came in motion and waited for the other two receivers to, uh, you know, I don't know if they hooked or whatever. But all he did was point down the field and he just turned on the Jets and was wide open. And Kelleher just threw it to him. Yeah. Um. I mean, Will, Will seems to be the fastest kid on the field, and he has been over the games that I've seen. Um, the Hiller offensive line did a great job giving Ryan all kind of time. Ryan stood in there, threw a perfect pass. He took a big hit, which I thought was a late hit. I don't know if anybody else saw that, but that was a, that was a late hit he took. They didn't call it. Ryan threw a perfect strike, touchdown, and the route is on. Yeah, that'll do it. <clears throat> That's, so, three, that's three big hits Ryan's taken tonight. So 117 to go in the first half. The Hill is up 28 to nothing on a 47 yard Abbott to Kelleher pass. And Westwood's in trouble. Well, you know, just speaking to some folks coming in, <laughs> you know, they say it looked like Hopkinton was the better team, but again, you know, you're going up against Westwood. You never know what you're gonna get here. Westwood's beaten them, you know, the Hillers since every year since 2011. You can never look past them, but it looks like this game is coming as advertised, and uh, so are the Hillers. I mean, they're an explosive offense, Rick. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's obvious. He's, it, 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 Abbott is easily getting behind. Um, you know, I don't they, – they try to man up on him, and they, they really can't. They have to keep somebody deep. They don't. 
Well, uh, haven't they figured? Don't they watch film? Yeah. <laughs> like, how yeah. would you not have somebody over the top on Abbott every time? I, I don't know, but Colin Fay takes it out to about the 25-yard line. Does look like Antonucci's uh, not out there still? Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing he's done for the night, Don. He, he, he's their workhorse. He's a tough kid. There's something wrong there. Obviously, he can't go. Cheerleaders I, still going strong with their with their uh, push-ups, Rick. They did 28. I hear you. They cash out, I think, usually up around <laughs> the, the 35, 40s. 35, they're 35, done. 40s. I thought I saw Dr. Brian Bisconi here today. I didn't see him walk across the field to see Antonucci at all, but. Reed Wilson in the shotgun. And he throws two, oh, drops by number 18, Drew Durker. Yeah, Durker was trying to turn and run before he got the ball, and he turned, it, turned his head and it just, you know, careened right off his shoulder pads. So incomplete pass, it's 104 left in the first half. Set up at second and 10 from the Wolverine 25 yard line. And it's a handoff to, ooh, and there's gonna be another flag. It looks like holding. I think it was on 56, looked like he tackled. 34, Colin Fape into the middle, and he's going to uh, the, uh, all the, for naught. The Westwood, the Westwood offensive line is a little overwhelmed. I'm sure they that number 77 plays both ways, and he's out. I'm sure he's in the middle of that line somewhere. And they're, they're just having a, a tough time containing Brown and McDonald and Cousins and the other Brown. And, you know, the front seven of the, of the Hillers is playing very well tonight. Yeah, this offense almost, uh, although the offense as a whole is smaller, almost reminds you a little bit of 2011 where they could put up a lot of points. Where some of these games are pretty much over at halftime. <laughs> as long as you're on the right side of that half, it's, you know, that's the key. So Reed Wilson in the shotgun with two guys, three receivers to his right. And a big horse just came straight ahead. That kid runs hard. I mean, Lindquist came up and stuffed the hole, kind of ran him over a little bit, but, uh, you know, he uh, he made the tackle. Yeah, Shammer Hall, number 27, just came straight ahead. There was no bounce, no nothing. He just you know, it looked like a bowling ball going through there. But that uh, is going to bring up fourth and about Six. 52 seconds left. This has been a, a long two minutes of this second quarter. Yeah, this game is this game was going along quickly, and now we've kind of dragged on here with the change of possessions in the last two minutes. And it, I would not put it past the Hillers to to try and score again. I mean, why not? Right. You generally take it off after about a five score lead. Yep. So it's only four right now. McQuarrie to kick. Abbott is deep. A little bit of kick, and Abbott's going to try to return it. And he cuts to the left. He's got a little bit of a wall. And he's down at the 45-yard line. Nice return. He took it from about the 30, about a 25-yard return for Abbott. Yeah, I mean, anytime uh, Will gets his hands on the ball, he's a threat, and he, you know, took it to the outside. Westwood had pretty good pursuit on the ball. Uh, Will tried to cut back there, lost his footing a little bit, and and uh, Hiller's got the ball. Looks like uh, in Westwood territory here at about their own uh, at Westwood's 46. Yeah, he got a nice block. I don't know who set him up around the 40-yard line, but he was able to seal the end and get him heading straight up field, and he tried to cut it back in. If this is turf, he's probably gone, Don. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Rick. I, I, I love the grass on football. I have no problem with the grass no, on as, football. As, as do I. 
you know, I could do without the crown, but um, yeah, you know, I love no, the, well, it is what it is. Yeah, I love the uh, I love the grass. So I'm not exactly sure what the holdup is here. Um, TV timeout. No, you know what? I think I think our I think our ball went to their sideline, so we're just trying to figure out where the oh, ball went. Check the pressure, Rick. Check oh, the pressure. Oh, we got we got a conspiracy going here. Huh? <laughs> we're not playing in Indianapolis, are we? <laughs> Kelleher's got four four stack receivers to his left. And Abbott's going to cut it across the middle on a little flare, and he's going to be gone. Jeez, oh man. That's just too easy, Don. This kid's fun to watch. He's worth the price of admission here tonight, Rick. He uh, he just kind of took a little, uh, a little curl route, really, and uh, just turned it up and cut across, and he, he and he turned it upfield. He's faster than everybody, Rick, you know, by, by a lot. By, by a lot. That's and that helps. <laughs> that's that's what the story is. I mean, yeah. he, just, he just caught that. He was one yard over the line of scrimmage, and it was a bunch set of four receivers over here, Don. Yeah. And then made his way into the middle, and just and no, nobody was there. That's a good weapon to have. You can just stack him behind everyone, let them clear out, and let him pick an alley to go. And that's how it's going to work. Thank you, Luke. has his fifth extra point on the night, which makes it 35 to nothing. Yeah, I mean, um, 27 seconds left in the quarter. I mean, we, you know, Will has been playing, you know, for three years now, and I, I'll tell you, Rick, he from this year compared to last year. You know, when he played his sophomore year, he, he was starting right away at, at the receiver spot, and then he kind of he hurt himself, and he missed a, a good chunk of the season injured. He came back, made some huge plays on Thanksgiving Day. Um, and then last year he came in, and, you know, I don't know if it was – he was it just hadn't worked out as much, or he just – I don't know. Just to me, he just – he looks like he really put in the work, and I'm sure he, he plays another. He plays lacrosse too, and he might play another sport. I don't know, but it looks like he really put in the time off the field and increased his speed considerably. Well, he's also maturing, right? I mean, he's older. Absolutely. And, <clears throat> ooh, number 34 was smoked by on our special teams by Ianelli. Yeah, Ianelli came down with a nice hard stick right there. Colin Faye felt that, I'm sure. So he's stopped somewhere around the 15-yard line. Yeah, Westwood can't get anything going here, and uh, and you know, the, you know, Ian Alley just put a that that kid looks like he's uh, a little slow going over to the sidelines. Uh, he's he's up, he's heading back. Um, he's just asking to be taken off the kickoff team. That's all. <laughs> I'll tell you, Rick, I might take a knee here if I'm Westwood. Get to the locker room and figure it out from there. So there's only 19 seconds left. 35 to nothing, Hillers. Now it looks like they're taking a knee here. And that'll do it. So the Wolverines will run the clock. 11 seconds left. That'll bring us to the end of the half. Please stay tuned. We will be right back for the second half.
Kai. I'm Haley. Hi, my name is Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal, and we love H Camp. Hey, I want to be a camp. We love H Camp. And I volunteer for H Camp TV. And I watch H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. We love H Camp TV. Welcome back to the second quarter, uh, second second half, I'm sorry. Half. Second half. Um, and we got a lot of scoring to go over here. We have five touchdown passes from Kelleher. First one was to Ebert, first play of the game, first offensive play of the game, 7.29 in the first quarter, up 7-0, 16-yard pass to Lindquist from Kelleher, also in the first quarter, 14-0. And it was to Kelleher to Abbott show after that, three touchdowns, 60 yards, 47 yards, 46 yards. And that does it for the scoring in the first half. 35 to nothing, Don. Put it in the books. Yeah, I mean, this, this game, as far as, uh, you know, what you're going to be looking at here from a Hopkinton perspective is, you know, you don't want to get anybody hurt, so you're going to want to be careful throwing your ones back out there. And then it's going to be about getting a bunch of kids who don't get regular varsity time and get them on the field. And, uh, and, you know, they work hard during the week, and they deserve a shot. And here they go. They're going to get their opportunity, I'm sure, at some point. And then for Westwood, you're just looking to make something positive uh, because there hasn't been a lot of uh, positive developments for them. I guess we got word that Antonucci had a bad ankle coming into this game, and uh, it looks like um, he may be done for the night. I'd be surprised to see him back out there. I, yeah, at this point, uh, he was your workhorse. That was obvious. If he had a hurt ankle coming in, Kudos to him for giving it a shot and uh, doing the best he could. But you can tell he's the focus point of the offense. And, and there, actually, I see him jogging onto the field right now. Um, but kinda, he's kinda a little limping. tender yeah. on that foot. So, uh, again, kudos to him for trying to gut it out. But uh, it's tough when you're overmatched, and, and especially with the score 35 to nothing, don't put his future in jeopardy. Uh, as we as we get started here in the, in the second half, as you alluded to, you you know, this is the time to start to develop um, some of the players. Is, and, and one of the staples of Coach Jim Gerard's philosophy, and, and you talk about it from time to time, is the younger kids, it's tough to break in uh, as a younger player on the varsity level. It's just tough to do that in, in, with his philosophy. And this is an opportunity to get to see the younger kids play on a Friday night and see how they're going to react and, and, and start to get some... I guess we can call it film on these kids and uh, see how they do it. Sure. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's you know, varsity football is difficult because when you're a young kid and you're 15 or 16 going up against, you know, 18-year-old kids, it's a big advantage. So to get on the field as a sophomore, you've got to be a, a, a pretty special uh, athlete and a pretty special football player specifically. And, uh, you know, over the years that uh, Coach Gerard has been here, there have been sophomores. He has played them. Not a large number of them. This year, there's only one that's cracked. It uh, looks like the cracked is the uh, starting lineup. But you know, we'll see. Uh, you know, the the JV team I think is undefeated, and the freshman team has only lost one game. So uh, the future here with Hiller football is so bright, Rick. We may have to put on a set of shades. So it looks and like you know they're going to be Oakleys. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. They will with me anyway. <laughs> and a little pooch kick. That's going to go. Why did they, they ran away from it. Number 30 from Hawkington almost ran away from the ball. Yeah, it worked. He, uh, maybe he was thinking he was, uh, was that covering 30? a punt. I'm John Massey, sure. I think it's number 30. Do you see number 30 out there coming off? He, I don't think he realized he could catch the ball. No, I don't see a number 30. I don't wanna, I don't wanna call the wrong number here. Yeah, I'm not sure who, who it was, but you know, you got to remember when you're fielding the kickoff, you have got to field it. You just can't let that thing drop. It's not a punt. You want to grab that ball. And we got somebody hurt down on the uh, far sideline. I don't, I don't know if it's a Hopkinton player or a Westwood player. It's a Westwood player. 18 from Westwood. Number 18 from Westwood is hurt. That is the wide receiver, Drew Durker. He Maybe he recovered the ball. I don't know. Anyway, he's up. And hopefully he's okay. But you know, this isn't what this isn't how you want to uh, how you want to start a half. I mean, you just you just bury the team 35 to nothing. And you come out and you make a 
Kind of a silly mistake here to give the Wolverines the pooch kick, pooch kick kickoff to open up the second half. Yeah, I mean, luckily it's a mistake that they made here, you know, with a five touchdown lead. Um, and that's something that I'm sure Coach Gerard will work on in practice moving forward because that can be an effective onside kick that little. You kick it over the first layer, the first layer and just kind of drop it in there and let it roll around. And, uh, and Westwood was successful with it. So they're going to stick with their ones to open up the half. Wilson, the shotgun. And he throws, and it's picked off by Cooney. And he gets down the left sideline to about the 40-yard line return. Yeah, that was a very and, poor pass. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it looked like it went right to him. I don't know who he was trying, if he threw behind somebody. Threw or, behind. Or, the kid was running uh, just a little kind of in there, and uh, he threw it behind him right into Cooney's hands. And Shane turned it up. Mm -hmm. Hiller's back in action here. So here we go. The looks like the first offense is, is back out there at the 39 yard line, 1048 into the 1048 left. As we just start the second half in the shotgun. And Hebert up the middle. And he gets about, about three on the play. Yeah, the line uh, looked like they opened up a little bit of a hole, a little bit of a hole, but it's still, the running up through those A gaps has been difficult all night. That's almost the only thing that has not worked for the Hiller offense tonight. Yeah, it'd be nice to, because, uh, you know, we're four and oh, it, it, you're, I'm, Pretty sure you're guaranteed to get into the playoffs at this point. You know, four and three would do it. So you're going to start coming across teams you don't know that much, but I'm sure it's going to be we're going to run into somebody who's a little bigger, a little faster, a little whatever. We're going to need to run this game, have the running game show up inside at some point. Well, when you look at this team, if there is one. Ryan Kelleher overthrows Cooney as a post into the middle of the field, just overthrew him. Yeah, Cooney was open on that post, Ryan, just kind of, you know, just threw it a little bit hard, and uh, it just it kind of sailed on him right over his head. But I was saying uh, back to the, you know, when you look at this team, the strength is, is really in their skill players, you know, at the running back position, the quarterback, uh, the receivers, they're very deep in, and the one unknown was the offensive line. When you look at them, they do not have a, a lot of size, um, they are. They, they do play well. They do come off the ball, and they they you know they create holds and they make uh, they uh, they hold their blocks. But you know you got to wonder if they do come up against a big team, how they're going to handle that. And we got a timeout whistle. Timeout, Hopkinton. I'm not sure exactly what we saw. We didn't see, but uh, they were spread out. Ready, ready to go. That's one of the things, Don, you notice, I was just watching Westwood lined up. It's one of the things you notice is when you spread out like that, when you have speed like we have, there's very little support in the middle or over the top. So our speed can easily get past one-on-one -on -one coverage if it's spread out across the field. Yeah, and the, um, and the offensive line is back to them, which, of course, Rick, you know I could talk about the offensive line and all I night. And I say go ahead. I mean, it's a, it's a very important part of the right. game. It's the most important uh, part of the game. You know, they're providing some protection for Ryan also. It's making his job a lot easier. Oh, that was a chop. Looked like yeah, a chop block. He got know. away with one. It's going to be fourth, and Kelleher he, picked up about three on the keeper. Yeah, he was engaged there and a chop. I'm not sure about that. And if, the official was looking right at it, so... Maybe that he looks like a high home. low to me. I don't know. Uh, I was surprised that wasn't thrown. Um, maybe he just wants to uh, move this game along a little bit, which is fine by me, I guess. So we don't have much. Um, um, we don't have much punting going on. Another timeout. Timeout. Westwood. Brendan Kelly will punt, and on the year. Brendan Kelly has 16 punts, 562 yards, 35.1 yard average. That's a good, those are good statistics in the, uh, oh, yeah. in the he, high school world. Yeah, he was a sophomore punted last year, punted very well, and 
he's carried that right on into this year. Too. And another fair catch, and it's fumbled, fumbled, and I don't know who's got the ball. Looked like Westwood. Westwood's may have saying they it. have it. They see nobody seen from Hopkins and seems to be jumping. So oh. Oh, Hopkins. No, Hopkinson does have the ball. Number 74. Number 74 it is. Yeah, Ben Powers came up with the uh, came up with the uh, fumbled fair catch. So nothing's going right for nothing's going right for Westwood at all. At this point, I, this game just can't go fast enough for them. Crowd's getting fired up with a little sweet Caroline. Scotty's got him going. Well, game day coordinator's fired up, and he's he is orchestrating something on going down there. The fans, the band's here tonight too. Again, they did a great rendition of the of the uh, of the national anthem. They've been playing a little bit along the way. They uh, it's always good to have the band at these games. Wide open touchdown, and that's uh, what is that? That's a thirty. 30-yard pass to Cooney. That looked like the same type of pattern that he sailed uh, a couple couple plays ago. And at that time, um, you know, Ryan was right on the money with it. And uh, that's going to be his sixth, so the fifth touchdown pass that's today. That's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 42 to nothing. Well, 41 to nothing pending. Yeah, but what's the first one was a, a run by Hebert. No, it was a... Um, did, yeah, Hebert went on a touchdown. Yeah, but I think it was a uh, it was just a screen to him, wasn't it? I don't think oh, I, I think yeah, he caught yes, that. Yes, I don't think that right, was a run. You're right, you're right. So this is so this could be a Hiller record here. Forty two to forty two to nothing. And it's funny you say that, Don, because somewhere in here, um, one of the things that we get from Coach Sullivan, and it's awesome, he does a like a game day media guide from us mm -hmm. and he had this little blurb in here in 2011 last hill of win versus westwood mike decina was 17 of 22 for 296 yards and six tds and alex hume had six catches for 144 yards and four tds well my goodness if you looked at this stat sheet it's very similar <laughs> except, except, except that, that, well, that game was kind of a blowout also. But, yeah, this. But the meaning of that game was uh, was certainly something different. Oh, and more confusion with, with Westwood on the kickoff. Um, so, but Kelleher only has, uh, I'm not Kelleher, Abbott looks like only has three TDs. I'm not sure the Hume, that may have been a record as well, four TDs the in the game. Four touchdowns. But Abbott may have that in, in this year already. I right. don't know. I don't know. But, the, you know, they are certainly, uh, you know, they are a formidable uh, passing team. And uh, the, you know, one of the likes that we haven't seen in a few years uh, from the Hillers. So it's, it's very, it's fun to watch. And, uh, you know, the weather certainly is cooperating here with it. Uh, certainly nice uh, passing weather. But um, looks like we got a lot of the twos in here now, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> and that's uh, that's to be expected, Don, as we get into 8:25 of the third quarter, 42 to nothing. I, I see number 11. Yeah, Patrick let me Brenton. Try and go through uh, some of the players here. You got number 20, 22, Brian Hillary over here. You got number nine, uh, Kieran Hur at the right outside linebacker. Got number 12, Brendan Kelly. Looks like as a, a defensive end, maybe. 22, Hurley. Yeah, 59. You got, um, don't have a 59. And that's still Wilson on the center. And a pickup of about 12 on the play, a first down. Yeah, a lot of the guys touching the ball for outside of Antonucci for for Westwood, a sophomore. So it, you know, the future bodes well for those young young players as they develop. Um, you know, number 27, 
Shamir Hall, who just had that ball in his hands, was a, is a sophomore as well. But the starting quarterback is still in. Yes, yes. And these guys were were playing in the first half when Antonucci went down. It's it's tough to replace a kid like that, so they're probably just rotating these kids at the back. And you, and we had noticed earlier that number 34, Colin Fay, took a pretty big hit on a kickoff. And uh, I don't know if I've seen him out since, Don. Yeah, they still have their starting line in, it looks like. And I see number 18, the receiver, he's still in. So for the most part, they have their healthy number ones in. Whoever is healthy, they right. still have their ones in. Which is okay, you know, I mean, this is, this is, this is tough. I mean, these are the growing pains you have to go through as a team. You don't play the game to win. You play it for the love of the game. So you have to love going through this. Absolutely. Oh, these kids that are out there right now are having a time of their lives, trust me. So that picks up another maybe two yards on the play. It's going to be third and about five, short six maybe. Yeah, we'll it's call hard it to five. See some numbers here. Fit number 53, Tommy Lincoln. Tommy Lincoln, last time we were here, he uh, hit a fumble recovery re or something. Recovered a fumble in the end zone. Yeah, number 21, Zach Frank. Looks like he's playing linebacker. Again, 59. We don't have him on the roster, so he may have uh, lost his jersey and gotten a new one. Well, that won't bode well. Uh, nope. Coach we got, will have uh, him running on Monday. Todd Scanlon as the free safety. Number 16. Wilson throws to Dirk. To number 18, Drew Durker. He picks up the first down at the Wolverine 46 yard line. And with 5.11 to go, the Westwood's got a little bit of a drive going against the twos. Well, I'm sure they're, you know, they're, I, I would have a tough time seeing them taking their ones out until they at least crack that goose egg on the, on the scoreboard. Well, a lot of these kids playing are young. So they may not have many guys behind them in that sense. Um, oh, it's good to see number 34. He is back in a running back. I had speculated a little bit he might be hurt, but uh, he runs to the right side, and he is met by a, a couple of hills, picks up about two. Yeah, it looked like Zachary Fisher was in on that tackle. Yeah, number 13. So it'll be second and nine from the 47. Got Tyler Doherty over there at the nose position, number 26. Interesting number for a uh, nose guard, huh? Well, I think uh, I think Tyler also runs the ball too, so. Once again, interesting combination. <laughs> yeah, I think he plays a little linebacker. They move him around, I believe, on that defense. So second and nine. Wilson to throw, he's gonna get hit, and he's able to get it down, and it's, and yeah. I see a late flag. A couple of flags. Yeah, that kind of hung up there. And, you know, the receiver did a good job coming back to the ball. And uh, I think number 13, Zachary Fisher, really didn't turn around and find it and kind of got hung up there for the interference. So here comes the official call. Holding. Declined. Interference. So... Two, two penalties on the plate, Don. They'll take the 15-yarder. In college, it's a 15, I mean, in college, in college as well, high school, it's a 15-yard penalty, not a spot penalty. So you won't see that 30-yard uh, advancement at this level. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, <laughs> I would like to see that change in the NFL now that we're talking about it, Rick. I, I, I just think that. I didn't it, hit a I, nerve, did I? I just, you know, a spot foul's fine. You don't need to. That's, that's become part of the offenses of NFL teams well, now is throw it deep and get a penalty. Yeah, throw it, underthrow it so somebody runs into you. So another handoff to number 27, Shamar Hall. And he picks up two, maybe three. Yeah, I mean, you can see, you know, they are getting a little bit more of a push, the Westwood offensive line. Um, but, you know, that was shut down pretty quickly by Doherty and uh, number 53, Tommy Lincoln. So, Don, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. As we look at the schedule a little bit, 
Next I think it's about time we look at the schedule, right, Rick. Let's yeah, look right. at the schedule. Yep. We're down at, at newly anointed uh, TVL large opponent Norton mm -hmm. next week, the 13th. And not, then, a not a pretty place to play. <laughs> no, in the sense of the field. A very good place to get wings down there for anybody. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> no, uh, i got to think of the. I know Wendell's. The one you're I know Wendell's. The, I know Wendell's the place you're for, about. for wings. It's right down the street from the field, actually. Yeah. Well, it's worth getting to getting to Norton a little early for those. And uh, and then our uh, neighbors to the east. Hmm, who would that be? Come to town. That would be uh, Holliston. Holliston. Holliston is at Medfield tonight. That's an interesting game. I would like to get an update on that somehow. Well, you know, we got Mr. Our producer, Mr. Tarosian. Maybe you get on Twitter and see what the TVL scores are. Because I'm sure this game has dragged on. That's an interesting game tonight. Uh, that'll tell you a lot of what we got with uh, with Holliston. I mean, we always know what we have. You always have to expect them to be obviously good. Um, but this is, you know, we just played Medfield close. Very curious to see how that game's going down. Down in, uh, I believe that's being played over in Holliston. Yeah, I don't know where that, that game is. But uh, we'll be doing that game. h Camp will be doing that game. Myself with... Dandy Don Lehman, and I don't know if we're going to have, I know we're going to have Mr. All-Weather John Ritz around. He wouldn't miss that game. But I don't know if we'll have other cameras going at that time. Um, well, we don't know, but it, and traditionally I'm not one to, to look, you know, past games. Um, Panthers trail 13-12 with 10 minutes left to play. Uh, Holliston Panthers are trailing 13-12 to against Medfield with 13 minutes to play. We just got the update. Okay. All right. So, okay, so. Everybody's uh, looped in together, it looks yeah, like. I mean, there's right. no. It's going to be close. It's going to be a close game. It's good to have it home. And being on the grass will likely be an advantage to us. And the throw from Wilson, and he gets it. He catches it right at the right at the sticks. That's a nice catch. Nice pass, nice catch. Is that number seven? Number seven, sophomore Mark James Jr. Another sophomore, so they're really um, letting some kids develop. I, you know, I don't know if they're starting by via injury, but uh, these young kids from Westwood, a lot of them touching the ball tonight. Well, that should be the goal for the rest of the game for Westwood. It is just trying to, you know, get some positive plays, get some kids some positive experience out here. Um, you know, back to this schedule here, Rick, and I guess we'll watch this play here. Wilson in the shotgun with wide receivers to the left and right. And almost picked off by number 21. That is number 21, Zach Frank, the backup running back, who's got a lot of action running the ball earlier this year. Made a nice play in the ball. Yeah, Zach was in there when, uh, when uh, Connor Hebert was banged up. And, you know, he had good depth there from his linebacker position. And the quarterback... Uh, you know, and threw the ball fairly hard, and Zach just kind of turned on it and almost really should have picked it off. Yeah, it might have been just outside his reach. He might have only been able to get one hand on it. Um, but just back to, you know, this schedule, you know, obviously Holliston coming in here in two weeks is uh, shaping up to be a huge game. Yes. Um, you know, what? one thing, and I guarantee you, Coach Gerard and Coach Selly and the rest of the, the, the coaching staff is going to try and pound into them is this game in Norton, you got to play that too. Oh. That's a classic trap game right there. Absolutely. Oh, number 34, Colin Fay, juking his way for about 10 yards, maybe more, maybe 15. No. Gets it down to about the 14-yard line. Now that went over right tackle there, and then he kind of shot it up, made a made a couple guys miss, and he looked like he had some good uh, some good down downfield speed. Yeah, but this, um, you know, Norton Norton is a, is a pretty good team. They're new to the TVL large, but they beat Hopkinton last year. Oh, they did? Yes, here. We, we tell them. We did the game? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll replay I, I remember it. I'll have to go back and take a look. <laughs> replay it for you. <laughs> but they're, you know, they're a physical team. That's no gimme. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, you can't look beyond. It's one play at a time, one game at a time kind of mentality. Yeah, but at the same time, I mean, everybody's going to be have Holliston on the brain now. You know, I've been, we've been through this. You know, when you know, you, you know, Holliston is circled on the calendar, and you know, everything's going great, and and uh, you know, the last few years it has not gone Hopkinton's way. So, 
okay, let's do it this year. But, you know, you got to take care of Norton down in Norton before that. Absolutely. And then, and that brings us to the end of the end of the third quarter, um, and Hopkinton up 42 to nothing. A lot of light bulbs working on the uh, hill side of the scoreboard. Um, as we get ready for the third quarter, it'll be a uh, fourth quarter. It'll be uh, second and seven, and Westwood with a long drive that started about the 30-yard line. So it's been almost a 70-yard drive. Um, as they're going to try to get this goose egg off the off the scoreboard. So after that, Hollison game. You know, regardless of these two games coming up, regardless of these two games coming up, um, regardless of these two games coming up, the Hills will be in the playoffs. And there's three open dates on the calendar: Friday, October 27th, Friday. November 3rd and Friday, November 10th, where you'll play the, you'll play out the playoffs um, and you'll go as far as you can in those playoffs and you'll still play those games even if you lose. They'll just be consolation games and they'll match you up with teams outside of your league. Last year it was Framingham and you, you play some interesting teams around. Well, yeah, I think the idea obviously is going um, to be, you know, to, to play some meaningful games and the Hillers will certainly have one uh, at the very least to play, right? And that will come the week after Holliston. So, uh, you know, you, it's right, you busy time of year. It's time to get focused. It is. And as you move to 5-0 and oh, and it's a touchdown from Wilson to Wilson, I can't see the number. Uh, Durker, Drew Durker on the reception. So it's a seven yard touchdown from Wilson to Durker to make it 42 to six. Wilson to Durker. So there you go. I mean, you know, that's what Westwood wanted and uh, you know, good for them. And McQuarrie, the punter, will now try the extra point. Wilson holding. And, it, geez, he's got a big leg, huh? No, we haven't seen him all night, but, yeah. He kicked that over the fence on the other side of the, yeah. Uh... It shot <laughs> off like a rocket. Uh, that's a, what year is he? That's a good thing to have if you're in a close game. McQuarrie is a senior. You won't be seeing much of him. Maybe he'd be kicking in the college level. He's got a, a strong enough leg. Yeah, so, so yeah, hopefully on October 27th we have a, a meaningful game. At Which, five, at, you know, you're going to be 5-0, right? So the, at worst you're going to be 5-2. and two. You could be hosting that game. It's a good chance. I mean, sure, at worst we'll be 5-2. and two. I would think that there would be a good chance that we'll be hosting that game. And I think that we'll, we, regardless uh, for playoff games, we're going to do our best to, to get there as an HCAM crew, even if it's away, especially if it's a meaningful playoff game. For the Hillers. Well, we'll try to do that. Some and, and, some stadiums, are, you know, can can handle it. Others aren't so good at it. And if our wives let us let us do it, uh, <laughs> let us out to do it. Uh, my wife would prefer me out the door. Are you kidding <laughs> me? <laughs> no, no. So uh, yeah. So hopefully, you know, we host a a playoff game, um, and then we'll take it from there. It's, it's all speculation after that. And then this year we host the. The Clockers, who are having a pretty decent year on their own right. Yeah, um, yep, they're doing okay. I think they're uh, right around two and two or two and three, something like that. Three and two, but they're um, they're not undefeated like we are. And uh, you know, I guess we'll have to cross that bridge. You know, wouldn't that be fun to <laughs> play Thanksgiving game and have to sit kids because they got a championship game the next <laughs> next week? Well, we haven't had that. We haven't had to deal with that. We've never had to do that. Nope, we have and, not. And uh, our neighbors to the east have have done that and that's probably one of the arguments against having um, the playoff system the way it works the Thanksgiving Day game becomes meaningless on in a some case on a couple of it's not it's not rampant on 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 Thanksgiving Day in fact there's probably very very few games that are impacted by it but I know Hollis and Westwood in the past have been impacted by playoffs and whatnot on Thanksgiving no, it's a nice problem to have, and then you know if it doesn't work out like that, then you have a, a rivalry game, and which is always fun. And it, you know the Ashland game for us has been pretty, uh, been very close uh, over the last few years. Although last year, 
Oh, and who's this? Oh, it's coming right. back, though. I see a flag. That's Frank. Zach Frank. Through the middle, broke to the outside, and, and broke it off for about 35, 40 yards. But I see a flag in the middle of the field. Yeah, I and think. And everybody's walking back with a hold. Yeah, I think. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't I hate to say kids' names when they have a penalty, <laughs> but yeah, there would look like there was a little block in the back there, and uh, you know Zach kind of cut off of that, and uh, but that was a, that was a nice run. It certainly was. So that comes back, and it's going to be it's first and ten because it happened about ten yards downfield. So it's first and ten. That's a spot foul. Yes, it is. So uh, number 11, Patrick Brenton, the quarterback. Ashland, Ashland took down Medway. Uh, or the, oh, yeah, game two. Yeah, Medway. Uh, Ashland beat Medway 25-22. Oh, oh, close so, game. And we, Hillers kind of handled Medway. Uh, they so. did. There was uh, one of those blowouts. It was 42 to nothing at some point. In fact, I think it ended 42 to nothing, no? So the Hillers, you know, the one thing about these spread offenses, they don't pull it back in and run the ball. They just keep it in the same formation and try to run out of that formation. And, and number 34, Drew Saparosius barrels ahead for the first down. Yeah, it looks like we have Patrick Brenton as the quarterback and uh, Saparosius just uh, just carried the ball, and the, uh, he's coming out here for number 32, uh, Colin McGibbon. So there's uh, 8.30 left in the fourth quarter. Ball on the 39-yard line, first and 10. Oh, lots of whistles. Lots of whistles going on. A lot of flags. False start on the Hillers. Uh, move his back five yards, first and 15. So let's see if we can uh, give some of the no names here on the offensive line. Number 57. Robbie. Robbie, the, the, the yep, kicker. You got your kicker. It's hard to see who anybody else is there. Yeah, I can't. I can't see numbers. We, they got to be down near the end zone, or have their backs to us. Written hands off to number 32. Number 32, Mc, Colin McGibbon. He picks up about eight, nine. We'll give him nine on the carry. Almost 10. Yeah, he came, uh, he ran hard there right over the left side. He had a, he got some good blocking and it was a nice gain, uh, a nice gain. For, I think that was his first carry. Could have been his first carry of the season. Yeah, well, I mean, we've, this is only my second game watching them. And first time we've seen them. And he's staying in, he's staying in the backfield. And Saparosius takes the handoff and he goes straight ahead for the first down. And he picks up about nine yards on the play. Yeah, both of these kids don't have a stat, uh, rushing stat on the year, so it looks like they're going to get some time here. Saparosius and uh, McGibbon are going to alternate, looks like, plays in and out. Running the ball, I would be surprised to see any type of, uh, any type of throw here out of uh, out of the hiller so you would think that they're just going to kind of grind it out here and wow straight ahead run by mcgibbon and he i mean he's just this is picking up chunks of yards right now yeah over the left side looks pretty strong there uh number 59 again we don't have a 59 here so we don't know who that is 57 pagliuca I can't even see who's in its center, but we might be able to see it here. Number 60. I, got a, I see a 77. Garrett Powers, number 60, looks like the center. Ben Gerard at the right, right guard. And this is Saparosius. And we got a 
Flag coming back. That's going to come back. That's a hold on the offense. A lot of flags in this game. Yeah. Well, everything happened yesterday. There's nothing on to go see, right? I mean, the, the, the Patriots, the Red Sox. We want to talk about the Red Sox and the Bruins on last night. Uh, what? Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I have something to do, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you got something to get to. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes the refs, you know, they, they like to do their job too. So there's nothing wrong with teaching these kids the right way to play and that includes, uh, you know, blocking without grabbing the kid's jersey, so. Well, if you're going to do it, just don't get caught doing it. That's mm -hmm. all. It applies yeah. to a lot of things, right? <laughs> and McGibbon takes it off the right side, and he tries to hurdle his way forward a little bit with a little gallop, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. You know, it's funny. Both of these two kids, uh, they have similar running styles. They both kind of run kind of tall. Uh, they both have a nice little burst. And uh, they almost look like the same player when they're running the ball, 32 and 34. Gibbon and Saporosius. And Don, I can't see. Is it number 60 who's playing center? Yeah, yeah, Powers. Yeah, Garrett Powers. And another handoff straight up the middle. No mystery here. Saporosius down to about the 10 yard line, 11 yard line. Well, I'll tell you, this is going to give you a little preview on how the JV game is going to go on Monday because this offensive line is handling Westwood's defensive line big time. So and I would expect Power or uh, Saparochis and McGibbon to have a big, uh, big Monday also. Because that line's opening up some pretty big holes, right? Yes, they are. And I, I, I you know, we haven't been following necessarily the line. I don't know if they're rotating guys in on the on the defensive side for Westwood. It's all point. clean uniforms, I can say that. It's all it looks like a bunch of new kids. And they look Whoop. smaller. And he breaks a tackle, and that was uh, McGibbon. It looked like number 34. It looked like he was going to be dropped for a loss. Brought it out to about the seven yard line. Yeah, and he's a, he's a hard runner. He lowered his shoulder there. You had uh, Drew Nealon out there throwing a block, and looked like they had a. Bottled up, but uh, McGibbon ran hard and he got three yards out of it. And you know the twos are going to try and put it in here, Rick. And uh, why not? Heck, and heck why yeah. Not? So the oh, Zaporosius was he should have been taken down for a loss, and he ended up scooting into the end zone. A seven-yard run by Zaporosius. Yeah, that, that kid came out of nowhere. I don't know if he was came from a linebacker blitzing, but he hits Aparochus in the backfield. Again, Rick, I don't know how many times we have to tell the kids you got to tackle low. He did not. He tried to tackle the shoulder pads, uh, bounced right off of Saparochis, and then, uh, you know, he took uh, Alex took the, the rest of it and went in the end zone with it. And that makes it 48. Actually, that was Drew Saparochis. I'm sorry, Alex is the older brother. Luca, and here he is. And, oh, did he hook it? It is no good. It looked like there was something off there. I don't know if it was a tough hold, but that was the first time I've seen that kid kind of shank it, and it, it just looked like the timing was off on that. It's possible. It's probably the the play that's that is. Uh, that has practiced the least. The special team doesn't get a, a, a lot of time during the short weeks that they have to practice at the high school level. Well, here we go, Rick. Yep. Uh, hot off the press is uh, Medfield just intercepted, and uh, they got the ball back, leading 21-12 uh, to 12 over Holliston with 524 to left to play in the fourth quarter. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. 21-12? to 21-12 to 12 Medfield, fourth quarter. Well, then it looks like Hollison's going to try to. Uh, it looks like uh, Hollison's going to come in uh, buzzing, right? Because that would be their only hope to. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, um, to stay, yeah, to, to, to compete. Yes, they would have to beat Hopkinton. Um, yeah, and I'm sure there's tiebreakers in there. Yeah, Medfield I don't know how the tiebreaker, yeah, I mean, if we if Medfield beat Hollison, Hollison, you know, I, I yeah. don't know, but. 
Uh, yeah, that's that's going to be their season right there for sure. Boy, this is something that Westwood has to shore up a little bit. They're letting kickoffs get by them, drop. Nobody wants to catch the kickoff. So with 2.45 left, 48-7, to seven, the Hillers will take the field defensively as the Wolverines will start the drive at about the 15-yard line. Not much of a return. Little tribute to Tom Petty here in the background, playing over the speakers. It's a very sad loss here. A uh, tough loss in the rock and roll world. Tom Petty. DJ Brian Herr playing DJ low. Brian Herr. Tom Petty. <laughs> <laughs> So, clock running, 2.39 to go in the, in the game. Now, somebody late arriving. At this point, we'll just let the clock run. Westwood's all set up to go. And oh, what over was his head. Yeah, it was over his head. And it's number eight running the ball for... I was going to say stay in bounds, kid. Number eight, West Ben Goodrich. The sophomore quarterback must also have a new center in the game. <laughs> yeah, well, I think number 26, Tyler Doherty, was making him nervous, and he, he kind of sailed it over his head. And um, they took it and just kind of ran out of bounds. He didn't want anything to do with the Hiller defense on that play. Well, let's just keep the clock rolling here. 147 to go in the game. And as we said, the next game we'll be doing, HCAM will be doing the Hollison game October 20th. And judging by some of the news that just came in on Twitter, we're going to expect Hollison to come in with a TVL large loss, and it will be their second loss in the season if that, help, that score holds. And it looks like Cannon, uh, nope, call, Colin Fay ran it all the way out to the first down. Nice tough run by Colin Fay. So the next game we'll be doing, Don, October 20th. October 20th. Um, against the Panthers from Holliston. It'll be, it'll be as big a game that's been played here in, uh, you know, a year or so, for sure. And uh, certainly, um, you know, anytime Holliston comes in here, it's, it's, it's big, and, and you get a big crowd. They, they travel very well. So that those other sides, the uh, stands yeah. over there will be full. Um, It'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Not to wish my life away, but I'm looking forward to it already. <laughs> well, you're, you're waiting for Turkey Day. <laughs> 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 Don't get me started on that. I can't wait to, to write, the, write the ship there. A nice ball by, uh, who threw that? Number eight? Number eight. Well, you know, I mean, the, ben you know. Powers, that's a nice ball. Uh, I'm sorry, Ben Goodrich. Uh, going back to the Turkey Day, Rick, um, you know, it's obviously a long history, and, you know, certainly that day we'll talk about it, but just the recent history has been dominated by the Hillers. Um, and then, you know, more recently in the last, th you know, three years, there's been some some of the best football games I've seen. I mean, mm. just some incredible finishes and just awesome high school football. Last year, uh, you know, Haley's Comet comes around every once in a while, <laughs> and so does an Ashland win. And uh, they won uh, They won last year, uh, Colin uh, Hanrahan, um, a terrific kinda, player, by the terrific way. Terrific player, great kid too, and kind of took it to us a little bit. And uh, they got their, they got a win, but we're going to have to right the ship this year and um, get the Hillers back in the win column. So that uh, that first down should do it. Uh, you know, they might run another play, but they certainly don't have to. And as uh, as we wind down, um, the Hillers will go to five and zero, oh, and a six touchdown day from Kelleher, one to Hebert, one to Lindquist. Three to Abbott, one to Cooney, um, and a run by Saparocious, and a Wilson to Durker touchdown. Final score here from Chick Welch Field, Dave Hughes Stadium. The Hawker Hill is 48. The Westwood Wolverines, seven. With Don Lehman, John Ritz on camera, Mike Tarosian, the producer. I'm Rick Decina, and we will see you October 20th.